Okay, it's 10 o'clock. We're going to start with opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking all of us up this morning and giving us another day of life. Thank you for giving us the message that we have and letting us be able to live in the time we are and letting us know that we're at the end of the world. Thank you for letting us be teachers so we can teach the Levites and help us to retain and understand the message and help others to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So welcome to Youth Prophecy Group. This is meeting 11 and it's December 22nd. The title of today's meeting is Comparing the Omega Lines. So question, we know that from the lines that go to 2019 that Donald Trump will be impeached, that Donald Trump will be impeached in this year, which he was, he was impeached on the 18th of this month. So does anybody know what he was actually impeached for, the reason he was impeached? Abduction of, of justice and abuse of power. Yes. Obstruction. Well, yes, it's obstruction of justice and abuse of power. That's Congress. exactly what I was going to say. So, uh, yes, you got that right. Yes, that's it. Now. Okay, so he was charged for obstruction of Congress because he wouldn't turn in papers. Or and he was trying to tell people don't go testify, and he was impeached for abusing power because he was using his the office of the president to get people to help him to get Ukraine to try to get Ukraine to help him win the election. So two things. So technically impeached twice. But anyway, two articles of impeachment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the title of today's lesson is Comparing the Omega Lines, Lesson 11. So God's people have an Alpha and an Omega history. The Alpha history is ancient Israel and the Omega is modern Israel. Also, in both ancient and modern Israel, there are Alpha and Omega histories. The Alpha history in ancient Israel is the time of Moses and the Omega history in ancient Israel is the time of Christ. And in Alpha history in modern Israel is the time of the Millerites, and the Omega is our time, the time of 144,000. So we see that both Christ and the 144,000 are Omega histories in their time, so they should line up perfectly. The line of the, so this is the Omega line of modern Israel, this is the line of the 144,000. As we know, the history of the 144,000 is the Omega history of modern Israel, just like Christ's time is the Omega history of ancient Israel. The history of the 144,000 began with the fulfillment of Daniel 1140b in 1989, which we call the time of the end. Next was 9-11-2001, where the second angel arrived. Third is the Sunday law. Fourth is the close of probation, where Christ's intercession for everybody it ends, and lastly is the second coming when Christ returns. So first is 1989, that's Ronald Reagan and the Pope. Next is 9-11 when the second angel arrived. Next is the Sunday law, which is a combination of church and state in our time. Next is the close of probation where crisis intercession for everyone is over. And then lastly is the second coming, which is the last way mark on the line of the 144,000. As you can see here on this slide. 1989, 9-11, Sunday law, close of probation, second advent. Okay, so in the three groups, in the history of the 144,000, there are three, three groups, the priests, the Levites, 
the priests, the Levites, and the Nephilims. The priests and Levites are from the old church, and which is the Seventh-day Adventist church, and the Nephilims are from the world. These three groups have their own separate reform line as well. In their lines, God brings them into his new church. So there are three groups on the line of 144,000, and on each of their, they each have their lines, and on each of the lines, they all come into God's church. So we'll start with the line of the priests. The line of the priests. We're in the line of the priests, the first group from the church. Our line, our line began on November 9, 1989, which was the time of the end. The next major way mark was September 11, 2001. Then came 2014, which was the Sunday law for the priest. November 9, 2019 was our close of probation. And in 2021, we will experience the second advent. The difference between the priest and the Levites and Nethanims is that we are part of the movement before our close of probation and that, which is not like them. And also that God is going to use us to bring them into the movement. So we see the line has five major waymarks, 1989, 9-11, 2014, 2019, and 2021. Next is line of the Levites. The second group to join the movement is the Levites. They come from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The first waymark on their reform line is September 11, 2001, which is their time of the end. The next waymark is 2014. Then came November 9, 2019, which was their Sunday law. Their close of probation will be in 2021. Panium and their second coming will be at the National Sunday Law. And from Panium to 2020 to the Sunday Law, they will be coming into this movement progressively. Okay. Oh, we'll just go here. Um. So this. Okay. So now the line of the Nephilims. So the last group is the Nephilims or people from the world. Their line started in 2014, which was the which was their time being, yeah. and then November 9, 2019, was their 9/11. And then in 2021, with the Midnight Cry will be their Sunday law. The National Sunday law will be the Nathanim's close of probation. And then the close of probation, which is Daniel 12, 1, will be their second coming or second advent. So, so this 2014 is their time of the end. 2019 or midnight is their 9 11. 22 1 or Midnight Cry is their. Sunday law. The Sunday law is their close of probation, and the close of probation is their second coming. So, we, if we line up all the lines, the 144,000, the priests, the Levites, and the Nethanims, the lines will look like this. As you see, the hundred. The priest Levites and Nethanims all start one way mark over, and they um, are smaller than the 144,000s line. And the 144,000s line, the, the way marks, the major way marks in it are 1989, 9 11, the Sunday Law, the Close of Probation, and the Second Advent. Whereas the priest, it's 1989, 9 11, 2014, 2019, and 2021. And then for the Levites, it's 9 11 to the Sunday Law. And for the Nethanim, just 2014 to the close of probation. So next is the Omega line of ancient Israel. And this is the line of Christ. This is the whole point of our lesson. So as we have seen, Christ's line is the Omega of ancient Israel, just like our line is the Omega of modern Israel. These two lines should and do line up very precisely. In the history of Christ, we should see an overall line paralleling the line of the 144,000. So in 4 BC, John the Baptist was born. This year, God began to raise 
him up to reform his church, the Jewish church. And Jesus was also born. Yes. In 4 BC, Jesus and John the Baptist were born. John the Baptist was the first messenger, which is the first angel. And in 4 BC, he arrived. The time the end, the time so, so he arrived in 4 BC. Therefore, the time of the end in Christ's time is 4 BC because that's where we see the first angel arriving. So that is 4 BC on Christ's line. Next is to AD 27. In AD 27, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Here he arrived and began to do his work. And Jesus, we know, is the second angel in his history. So we know that, 90, that AD 27 parallels 9-11. So now we have the second way mark in the line of Christ is AD 27. The next way mark is AD 34 when Stephen was stoned and they began taking the gospel to the Gentiles. Next way, Mark is AD 34, which lines up with the Sunday law, when the message goes to the world or the Gentiles. Okay, so Ellen in AD 70. Ellen G. White tells us that the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 foreshadows the close of probation. And then we have a quote that says from Ellen G. White, the Savior's prophecy concerning the visitation of judgments upon Jerusalem is to have another fulfillment, of which that terrible desolation was but a faint shadow. In the fate of the chosen city, we may behold the doom of the doom of a world that has rejected God's mercy and tram trampled upon his law. The records of the past, the long procession of tumults, conflicts, and revolutions, the battle of the warrior, with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. And that is from Isaiah 9, 5. What are these in contrast with the terrors of that day when the restraining spirit of God shall be wholly withdrawn from the wicked, no longer to check, no longer to hold in check the outbursts of human passion and satanic wrath? And that's from GC 3.6.2, no, GC 3.6.2, so 36. So therefore, that LNG Y was comparing the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 to the close of probation, which was Daniel 12, 12, 1, where Michael stands up. So we can see that AD 70 is the close of probation on Christ's line. Next is AD 71. In AD 100, John saw Christ come for a second time in that history. John was exiled on the Isle of Patmos and Jesus came to him. We have a quote from 19 MR 40.4. In the days of the early Christians, Christ came the second time. His first, his first advent was at Bethlehem when he came as an infant. His second advent was at the Isle of Patmos when he revealed himself in glory to John the Revelator, who, quote, fell as dead, end quote, when he saw him. So this year, AD 100 parallels the second coming on the line of the 144,000. So we see now we have completed the line. We have five major waymarks for the birth, 4 BC, the baptism, 27 AD, 34 AD, where they take the message to the Gentiles, 70 AD, which the destruction of Jerusalem, which parallels the close of probation, and 100 AD 100, where Christ comes the second time, paralleling the literal second coming. So since Christ's line, which is an Omega line, lines up more closely with ours than any other line, we should see three groups just like we see three groups in our line. So the three groups in our line, the priests, Levites, and the Nethinites. The three groups in Christ's line are first the disciples, which represent the priests, then there are the they go back to the church and bring out more Jews and come. the Jews come to the Christian church, which are the Levites. And then last, they have the Gentiles, which represents the world, which are the Nethanims. So this is the line of the disciples. Don't go next. I told you don't go next.
the first group in that history of Christ was the people that believed the messages of John and Jesus in that in the time that they in the time that they gave them, like the twelve disciples. The, so that means that the first group is people that accepted the message of Jesus, like the twelve disciples. The disciples would line up with the priest. So that's us. The disciples' line, therefore, must begin at the time of the end, which was 4 BC. Their 9 11 was AD 27, where Christ arrived. And just like in the line of the priest, their first two way marks were the same line as the line of Christ, but the last three will not be because of his, because this is a fractal. So the next way mark on the line of the disciples, as we saw the first two, 4 BC and AD 27. The next way mark is around AD 30. Shortly after Jesus was baptized, John the Baptist was imprisoned, and, AD, and in AD 30, he was killed. After he was put into prison, Jesus began to teach more. Here we see a change of leadership. The imprisonment and death of John parallels 2014. Since 2014, in our movement, the leadership has changed from Jeff Pimpinger to Elder Parmenter. The next thing mark is the age, which is the cross. So the cross lines up with 2019, specifically November 9th. For the disciples, the cross was their close of probation. Judas was lost at that time because he did not fully believe Jesus' message while the other disciples were scattered. But the cross was still a success because Jesus had fulfilled his mission. AD 31, which is Pentecost. At Pentecost, which is still in the year AD 31, the disciples were given power to preach the message to the Jews. Then they started to bring more people into God's church. This parallels 2021, where we'll go back to the SDA church and bring people out of it into our new movement. So here we have 50 days after the cross, which was still in the same year of AD 31, there was Pentecost. And that's where the disciples started bringing Jews, more Jews back into the church. Well, not back into the church, but in the church. And this is the completed line of the disciples. It starts with 4 BC, which was the birth of John the Baptist in Christ. Then in AD 27 was the baptism of Jesus, which is 9-11 and this is 1989. John was killed and that ended the first messenger and began the second messenger, which is 2014. Then the cross is midnight and that's where Christ was crucified. And then lastly is AD 31 and that's Pentecost where they took the message to the next group. The disciples did. So next, the disciples go back to the Jewish church. At Pentecost, the disciples went back to the Jewish church. They preached to them, and many of them left the Jewish church and joined the Christian church. These represent the Levites. In our time, from 2021 to the Sunday Law, we will be bringing Levites into this movement. So Pentecost, which is where the disciples went back to the church, parallels 2021. In AD 34, when the Jewish church was fully passed by, that parallels the Sunday law when the SDA church is forever passed by. So there's first Pentecost where they get power to preach back to the Jews, to go back and preach to the Jews. And then AD 34, will the Jews seal their rejection of the message? So this parallels Panium and the Sunday Law, where we bring in the Levites. So next is the line of the Gentiles. After Stephen was stoned, the disciples of Christ traveled throughout the then known world, spreading the gospel. The 490-year prophecy given to the Jews, Jewish nation had ended in that same year, AD 34. The followers of Christ began to preach to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were anyone who wasn't a Jew, which was the world, or now we call them nethonyms. 
So AD 34 lines up with the National Sunday Law, there we begin public evangelism, which extends to the close of probation, or the close of probation in the line of Christ, or the line of the Gentiles is AD 70. So AD 34, which is the Sunday Law, which when we begin to take the message to the Gentiles, and then AD 70 which is the close of probation when Jerusalem is destroyed, as you can see on the left. Okay, so these are all the lines combined. Our line is the line of the of Christ. The time of the end is 4 BC when he's born. AD 27 lines up with 9-11, which is his baptism. Stephen was stoned in 34 AD, which is the Sunday law. Jerusalem is destroyed in AD 70, which is the close of probation. And Christ comes for the second time to John the Revelator in AD 100. Next is the line of the disciples, 4 BC, Christ was born, which is the time of the end. AD 27, which was his baptism, is 9-11. John's death is 20, John's death is 2014. And the cross is AD 31 which is their close of probation and Pentecost is their second advent. Baptism for this is the line of the Jewish church or the Levites. Baptism, AD 27 is their time of the end. John's death, 2014 is their 9-11. The cross is their Sunday law. Pentecost is their close of probation and Stephen Stone is their second advent. This is the line, the next line, the last line is the line of the Gentiles. John's death, which lines up with 2014, is their time of the end. The cross is their 9-11. Pentecost is their Sunday law. Stephen stoning, the stoning of Stephen in AD 34 is their close of probation. And Jerusalem destroyed is their second advent. Mm -hmm. I said 2014. What is lines up with 2014, but it's their time of the end? John's death. So in summary, we've looked at the line of the 144,000 and the three fractals that we are very familiar with, beginning in 1989, 9-11, Sunday Law, Close of Probation, and Second Advent for the 144,000, and then for the priest Levites and Nethodims over just one way mark. So the priests begin in 89, the Levites in 9-11, and the Nethodims in 2014. And we saw how we bring the Levites into the church between Panium 2021 and the Sunday Law, and how we bring the Nethanims into the church from the Sunday Law to the close of probation. And then we looked at the line of the Christ, the line of Christ, and how it's an Omega history, so we can see the same pattern it begins with the overall line from 4 BC, which is the time of the end, 8027, which is 911, 8034, which is the Sunday Law. 8070, which is the close of probation, and 8100, which is the second habit. And then we see the three groups, the disciples of Jesus and the disciples of John. From their time then was 4 BC, their 9-11 was the baptism, or AD 27. John's death was 2014, the cross was 2019, and Pentecost was 2021. And then we see the line of the Jewish nation just won over and they're brought into the church between Pentecost and AD 34, just like the Levites. And then the Nethanims are brought into the church between AD 34 and 70. And then the Gentiles are brought into the church between AD 34. It won't and, and then the Gentiles are brought into the church from AD 34 to AD 70, which parallels Sunday law to the close of probation. So we see it's the same pattern in both our history and the history of Christ. So that is the end of the lesson. Does anybody have any comments or questions about the lesson? No? Okay. What? You want something? You want something?
Um, I do have one thing to say that since we, we do call this um with the thing. We do call this the line of Christ, this top line right here, just like we call the top line up here, the line, the 144,000. But we also say that that it's the line of Christ and then we have the line of the disciples right under it, right here. And the Christ and the disciples were the same group of people. So that lines up exactly on our line as well, how we say that, that there's a fourth group, sort of, which is the 144,000, but we say that the priest are the 144,000. So it's technically four groups, but two of them are the same people, but they have two different lines, and that lines up the same with Christ's time, where the disciples and Christ were the same group of people, but they have two lines. One is for Christ, and one is for the disciples. Like, one is for the 144,000, one is for the priest, but it's the same group of people. And when you hear like the presenter of Manu test saying that the omega lines actually line up because they're both the omega lines, like when you see this, it's like they actually do really exactly line up. How we seeing the time of the end, because we always said Christ's birth was the time of the end, his baptism, 9-11, we've said that. 100, the second advent, it was actually literally the second advent, so we'll be experiencing the third advent, actually. But anyway, 8070, the close of probation, it's obvious, because Ellen White says it. Um, the Sunday Law, 8034, when they begin to take the message to the Gentiles and et cetera, that's just showing you how it exactly really does line up, the both Omega histories. And we saw, we did, this is not the exact same as we used to teach it because we used to always say the cross was the Sunday law, which it could be a different application. But here we see the cross is primarily, it's primarily 2019 or November 9th, whichever said. one. But 8034 is more perfectly the Sunday law because that's when we go to the Gentiles, which we knew back then, but it just we just couldn't see it back we, then. We probably were saying that because we didn't have the waymark of midnight yet. No, we did. Are you sure? Well, I, well, I think so. Yeah, that. but I remember we said the cross was the Sunday law and the midnight cry was the triumphal entry. Is that the Jeff era? Yeah. Sir, era. Not error. Era. Yeah, but the midnight. But that was either a different application, exactly. but it's most likely incorrect. And this is the correct so the line. It could be another application, but it was the 8034 fits the Sunday law more closely than the cross more closely it doesn't even fit the cross a, a 34 really. well, you don't know that you don't go to the, the third cross this the sunday law i don't know how you prove that that was a jet error maybe error. same thing we'll close the probation anyway, anyway. So does anybody have any questions or comments or anything they want to share about the midnight cry message in general? So when I have, I have a comment, a kind of question. So when we're in the increase of knowledge, whatever you want to call this, increase of knowledge, is it still called the midnight cry message? Are we still in the midnight cry message? No, but there's nothing else to call it. So, if there's no other comments, we will reshare the screen. So, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for coming. Um, if you want to contact us for notes, if you have questions, you can email them. If you want updates or the recordings from the meetings, email youthprophecygroup at gmail.com. As you can see on screen. Okay, so thank you everyone for coming. And, and hopefully we'll see you next week for guest, our next lesson. Before we end, guest has a question. No? No. Okay. okay. Well, let's have closing prayer. Bow your head. 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to this new week. Please empower us to keep, please empower us to do your will and to be able to understand and remember this message. Thank you for letting us know what you're preparing us for to teach the Levites and Nethans and even past that. Please help us to be ready for that and get prepared for that so that we can be used by you. Thank you for providing for all of our needs. And please continue to be with us and hopefully we can come together next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So mm -hmm. bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.